Good morning, everyone. Good morning again. Bless the Lord. We give God thanks for this morning. And um, we want to say how much we appreciate the Lord for just being with us and to speak into our hearts this morning. And so this morning, I just want to give you a nice welcome this morning. And I want you to say, praise the Lord. Do you have life this morning? Do we have water and light this morning? Yes, so we have all what to give God thanks for this morning. And I want to say, so happy to see you this morning. You are looking bright and chirpy. You are wearing nice clothes this morning. And I'm sure you're smelling fresh and nice. It's God's doing, you know. And so we have to give God thanks this morning. You know, I hope but people have that opportunity this morning. Yes, and so I want to say, Welcome to 47G. It's a pleasure having you. It's so nice to see your lovely face. Please turn to the person and say, Welcome. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Praise the Lord. I can't find my paper. So this morning, I want to make us give a special Welcome to Shereen Morgan. Is Shereen here? Shereen? Please stand, Shereen. Yes. And also Kathleen Powell. Right. Nice to have you. Welcome to 47G. And I'm sure this morning you have been blessed. If you have been blessed, just wave your hands to me. Let me can see you. Praise the Lord. So that's all we do here at 47G is to worship the Lord. And we thank you for coming and being a part of our worship this morning. And so we look forward to see you next week, same place, same time at 9.30, where we all have a good time praising the Lord. Put your hands together for them again. And also, you know, I looked around this morning and I realized that you know, I want a special welcome to pastor's family. You always see him alone. And you check, say, I him alone there. No. In my family too. And so I looked around and I said, Narissa, that pastor's sister stand. Right? And, um... <laughs> Let me use the neck. Neji, please stand. <laughs> Nadre, Nadre, please stand. And Nadre, I see a gentleman beside you. Is that your husband? I, ca I can't see, I can't see. Oh, it's your brother. Oh, okay, please stand. I just couldn't see you. I couldn't sit. Stand. Right, stand, right. Please stand. Keep standing. And also, I look on my left. I see Pastor's son and his family. Please stand. So we have Brandon War, his wife. Geodel War, their sons, where are the sons? Oh, they are Haran, Haran, yeah, Haran and Jethro, they are children church. So I want to say, uh, turn around that people who don't know you can see uh, a pastor's family. Yeah, turn around, make a 360 degrees. Come around, right, right. Okay, so put your hands together and welcome them. And so we also, you know who is in the also? Our pastor. If you didn't know our pastor, please stand again, pastor. They never, they, make, they, they never get a good look and they never realize it was you. Please stand, pastor. Right. So here, pastor, welcome to church this morning. And this is Pastor Timon Ezekiel War. We are glad to have you this morning. Bless you. And so... We have a lot of activities in our church this morning, and so I want to bring you up to date of what is happening in our local, local church. So, Sister Richards, she's, she's overseas, and she said that she'll be attending the General Assembly. So, she's overseas, and she'll be going to the General Assembly. Yes, she'll be going. Last week, some persons promised Sister Alexis to contribute items toward those who are affected by the storm. Persons who have brought um, an item 
please give them to Sister Angela Thomas. Please stand, Sister Angela Thomas, so they can see you. Right. So please give that to Sister Angela Thomas so that 47G can go and, and, and meet those persons and give to those who are in need. So the going is has started. So we have made a new commitment. National Summer Camp of the Church of God of Prophecy is from August 4 to 23. The cost is $15,000. Those persons who are interested, please see your youth director for more information. Right. So, August 11th is our, is our rally, and we are seeking interested persons to join the 62 voice rally choir. Sister Karina, how much we have already? 40? So we need about 22 more, right? How much we have? All right, so we need 62 persons to join the choir. And they say that send a voice note with singing Amazing Grace to any member of the choir or praise team. And they will forward to, it to Sister Karina, Brother Joel, Br Brother David, Sister Christina, or Sister CQ. Please state your name and then commence singing. I'm, no, I'm sure, Sister CQ, that some person having trouble sending voice note. When church over, please see them over here, sir. Please come to them and you can sing a verse and just tell them they want to be a part of the choir, all right? Make it easier. Vacation Bible School. Let me hear you say Vacation Bible School. Right. So Vacation Bible School will be on the, I can't see so far, you know. Okay, let me see. Is when? Okay, so it will be on the 22nd of August. That will be next week of July. So that will be next week, Monday. Right to, to Friday. And it starts at when, Sister July? Come give me a piece, come. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Vacation Bible School starts next week, Monday, July 22nd, to Thursday, July 25th. And we want to close with a trip for the kids to Oak Garden. There will be a consent form for you to fill out if you're interested in sending your child. So please bear that in mind. And we're still seeking volunteers for VBS. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister J. Worship in the street. A new date will be July 28, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. That is the time when 47G Olo Road will be going to Swallow Field to have worship in the street. So you see the going come again? Right. So we'll be going. International Assembly will be 30, uh, July 31 to August 4 in Orlando, Florida. And I'm sure some persons, well, some persons from 47G will also will be going to Orlando, Florida. So that's one of the land that the Lord so will propose us to, you know. So we'll be going. Um, on August 3, on the assembly at 9 a.m., Jamaica will be in charge of morning prayer. So the link will be sent to you and um, will be, Jamaica will be in charge of morning prayer at 9 a.m. So bear that in mind. On the same day, at 2 p.m., the Caribbean will be having their celebration. So look out for that also on August 3 at the International Assembly. At 2 p.m., the Caribbean will be having their celebration. And so if you, you have to look good, you might see some person from 47G2, right? Good. The International Assembly, International Summit, can't see. Okay, right, that's it. International Summit by Live It, um, put on by Live It, sorry. 
International, International Summit, July, 28, July 18 to 21, 2024, hosted by Bishop Donald McFarlane and First Lady McFarlane, will be July 18 to 2024 at Hope Fellowship Church. 47G Priest Team will be sharing on the Friday night, so it starts this Thursday, and, the, and this Thursday, this, this Thursday, and then Friday will be when 47G Priest Team will be sharing. So please bear that in mind. So it will be in the International Assembly hosted by Bishop Donald McFarlane. So we are invited to be there. So bear that in mind. <laughs> this afternoon at 2 p.m. is Sunday school for the preteens, 9 to 12 years old. And then at 7.30 will be Bible study. Right. Activities for this week, Tuesday, midday prayer at 12 noon, 12 to 1 p.m. on Zoom. Then on Wednesday will be a big day here, fasting and prayer. And Brother Gabidan is inviting everyone, those who are on vacation, school children, to be here for a wonderful time of fasting and prayer. And it starts at 10 a.m. So please bear that in mind. Then at 7 p.m., it will be singles and couples ministry. So all the singles people, all the married couple, please be here. Please make an effort to be here on Wednesday, on Wednesday and start at 7 p.m. Then on Friday, Friday, Friday is the youth ministry games evening for food, fun, and fellowship. And that starts at 6.30 p.m. So please bear that in mind. Church contact information. So if you want to contact us, please call our office here at 876-648-9278. It's open at mon from Monday to Thursday. Friday is the is day off. So it is Monday to Thursday. And it's open, I think it's 10, 10 a.m. And also, if you can't reach us, please send us a line. C-O-G-O-P.O-H-R at gmail.com. And also, if you're interested, if you want to send your prayer requests to us, please call the line. 876-334-3439 and it's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. or you can send us a line at prior.oldoproad at gmail.com Mission 365 for the souls of men it also say go and so we have to bear that in mind. And that starts from January. And we are still going and continue to go for the souls of men. Do you realize the time is hot? Even when the sun is not out or you can feel it? Well, drink more water. Stay hydrated and keep cool. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you his peace. And so I say to you and to you and to you and the person next to you, have a nice day with Jesus. Have a nice day.
service, praying that we will see the move of God and that the Holy Spirit will have its way. Begin to pray. into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, 
even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. We're going to go into a time of giving, and so I'll invite the ushers to come, and I will invite Minister Augustine to come and bless the offering and pray for our speaker for today. Hallelujah. Can we worship the Lord? Can we lift our voices and give worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning? Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. We worship you. We honor you for you are good and your mercies enjoy it forever. We thank you this morning, God, for our jobs. We thank you, Lord, that you have provided for us that we can come into your presence and to give back into your kingdom some of that which you have blessed us with. So it is with thanksgiving this morning that we say thank you, God, that we are able to work with our hands and we're able this morning to give back to your program. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for our jobs this morning, Jesus. Those who have jobs, we give thanks. Those who don't, Lord, I pray today that provision will be made. That even as they seek for a better job or they seek for something to do, that God, you will open the way. We thank you this morning because you are able to do great and mighty things. And so as we come this morning, we lift up your son, your servant, who we have chosen for such a time as this, to bring forth the word. We thank you, God, that your word is already anointed. We thank you, mighty God, that your word is sharp and it's powerful. We thank you that you said your word will not return unto your void. And so we pray this morning, as your son, oh God, stand in the gap to minister the word of thine this morning. We thank you for the lives that will be touched and challenged with this word. Hallelujah. You said that we should go this morning. And I pray as your word go forth. Yes, Lord, it shall spring forth. It shall fall on good ground. And oh God, it shall yield fruit this morning. I pray for a receptive heart. I pray that the hearts of your people will be turned towards hearing and getting inspiration and revelation even now, Lord, from that which will be said through your servant this morning. Hallelujah. I pray for a special anointing upon your son this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes we take it for granted. Oh, God, that because we preach so many times that we are able to do it. But I pray today that you will come alongside him this morning. And the Holy Spirit, which is his paraclete this morning, will speak. Hallelujah. Thus said God, we pray for a new anointing, oh hallelujah, oh God, to be up on your servant this morning. We pray that you will pour into him even now. Yes, Lord, there's a word that he has prepared, but yes, God, if that word should shift this morning, may he be able to understand, oh God, if there needs to be a shift, oh God, that he will not doubt this morning what you will say and deposit into his spirit this morning. We thank you, mighty God, for what you will do through your words today. We pray for the congregation that if there's even one person this morning, oh God, that will be blessed, that will be saved, that will be delivered because you would have spoken Spoken and your people would have received. We thank you today and we give you praise and we give you worship. We give you adoration this morning because you are God. Yes, Lord, you are Lord of the universe. You are Lord of 47 G. You are Lord Almighty God of this nation. You are Lord of our lives. And we dare not live without you this morning. So we say, take charge, my King, in what you will hear today. And let it be a sweet, sweet 
sweet, sweet sound in your ears this morning. Open up our hearts. Oh, hallelujah. Some person might still be with all light and all these things. And they're thinking and they're considering. But give us a heart today to just give worship. To just praise you. Oh, hallelujah. To just give adoration. To just bless you this morning. Because God, you are good. And your mercies endure it forever. We love you, Lord. We love you. And we thank you for your blessings upon us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So we'll take a chorus and the ushers will collect our offering. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord.
is one of those words that the dictionary tells me it's a verb. It's a verb and that means it carries with it action. Because in my time, and English was my word subject, but in my time at school, I was told that verbs are action words. They are doing. It requires you to be active, to be doing something. But go is one, is, is one of those verbs that by itself, it is very vague. And therefore, go has always been associated with what is called phrasal verbs. In other words, go usually needs a little bit of clarification or qualification. And so, go is very often accompanied by words like over or across so you will have go over there go across you will have go down or go in or go into 
or go out or go far or go against or go back or go forward. But ultimately, go tends to need a companion. In order to bring across a distinctive meaning. So you can imagine me then. When the Lord gave me a theme, a verb, for 47G for this quarter, go. And there were no phrasal verb that was accompanied to say go forward, go backward, go under, go around, go against. Just go. But I believe today that God continues to do what he did to the children of Israel when they cross from Egypt into the into land of Canaan. The Lord said to them then, I am going to give you manna. Manna, bread. Sometimes the word is itself referred to as manna. And what he did with Israel then, he said, I am going to give you just enough for today. And I believe that's what God is doing is saying to me, I'm giving you enough go for today. Come back tomorrow or next week and I'll give you another qualifying or phrasal verb. So for today, we're going to Joshua chapter 1 verses and I want to read verses 1 through 7 for completion. Could you put that on the screen for me, please? Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Right, let's go. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Note the word, arise, go, and what's the phrasal verb? Over, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto a land, unto the land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of thy foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, river Euphrates, or the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land. I swear, I swear unto their fathers to give them. 
verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayst observe to do according to all the laws which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayst prosper whithersoever thou goest. Lord, I pray that you will give us specific instructions from your word today. That we will leave here very clear as to what is it that you have instructed us and require of us. I pray, God, that your words will not return to you void. But, Lord, it will prosper in the hearts where you will send it today. I pray that you would use me, Lord, as a vessel through which, Lord, your words will come, and it will come with clarity, it will come with power, and you will be glorified, and lives will be transformed as persons are stirred to go in Jesus' name. For today, I want for us to focus on the theme, Go Possess the Land. Go Possess the Land. Our key verse will be verse 3 of Joshua chapter 1. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. You know, we have entered into a, a period of our existence. Some people refer to it as the postmodern era. We are the very word go and the concept of go is gradually being eroded. This is happening today because we now exist where there is work from anywhere. When I started out working, it was normal and expected that you go to work. It was unheard of for you to be working and not going to work. And therefore, the concept that I know work, but I don't need to go, in a few years' time, if we continue on this trend, persons might wonder and ask, why did you have to go to work back then? It is the same thing. I am used to going to church. being in church and not going to church was not something that was even remotely possible back then. But I hear people will tell me, Pastor, I was in church today, but I was online. So the concept of actually going to church as we knew it back then is changing. A matter of fact, 
going is slowly becoming not necessary again because in addition to that, we have online school. Persons would have studied and gotten their degrees and never leave their bedroom. In my time, I know about you go to university, you go to class. And I see the young people laughing at me. It means, therefore, that the concept of going is slowly or gradually becoming an outdated concept. If you tell anybody this day, in this day and age, that you are going into the bank to do a transaction, They will think that you are one of those old timers. You're not with it. Because nobody goes to the bank anymore to join line. Going is gradually becoming an outdated and slowly becoming an obsolete concept. But with that said, why at this time is God saying to 47G, old up road, go? Because going is something that God in his first interaction, when he decided after the fall of man and he was going to raise up a generation, a, a, a people through whom all nations of the world would be blessed. His first call in Genesis chapter 12, when he called Abraham, he said to Abraham, Abraham, I want for you to leave where you are now, and I want for you to go. Separate yourself from what is around you. Leave your father and brethren, and I want for you to go. Go to a place that I will show you. And it is in that command and obedience to that command that you will be blessed. In scriptures, as we will look at over the next couple of weeks, there is so much that is associated with going. Let me tell you something. The scripture shows that going as a blessing associated with it. Abraham was told, if you go and follow me to that land, in blessing I will bless you. Hebrews 11 records in the hall of fame, Abraham being Bless. Why? Because he left what was known and went into what was not known. He obeyed God and went. Jesus, another example that Hebrews tells us about, he also in order for us to have hope today and salvation, Jesus had to go. He was in heaven, but he had to go to earth to fulfill the mission to which God had called him. Go is a mandate 
that has been given to every called of God. Go. It is the great commission as we know it. It was Jesus' last instruction to those he left on earth. He said, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel. Go is not a new instruction. It has been the instruction from way back then, and it continues to be the call that God is echoing to us today. Go. But as we continue to explore this subject, I want for us to now turn our attention to the passage read. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 introduces this, the, the, the Israel and, and Joshua as taking over from Moses. And the introduction in chapter 1 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. And I, 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 I contemplated and wondered what was the significance of introducing Joshua as leader by saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. What was it about Moses? As we know it, we can go back to history. God, in Genesis chapter 1, in Genesis 12, had promised Israel, Abraham and the children of Israel, his descendants, that the land of Canaan was theirs. He said to them from back then that they would have what? They would have been carried down into Egypt and sojourned there for 400 years. But after 400 years, I am going to bring you back into the promised land. So Canaan was promised. Interestingly, In, in, in Genesis chapter 13, Genesis chapter 13, there is an interesting kind of, and I believe it's verse what, 14. Let me find that. I want to read that. You work with me and bring that up on the screen, please. Right. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that lot was separated from him, lift up thine eyes and look for the place where thou art, northward, southward, and eastward. For all the land which thou seest, I will give it unto thy seed forever. <clears throat> and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then she shall... Then then shall thy seed also be numbered. This is the verse we come into. God was saying here to Abraham, whilst Abraham was in the land of Canaan, I am making you a promise. Look around you. Look around you, look eastward, look westward. 
eastward, look northward, look southward. Everything that you can see, as far as your eyes can see, I have given it to you. But then God said, although I, God, the sovereign God, has given it to you, you have an action that is required. He said, arise, walk through the land, the length of it, and the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. I have given it to you, but you need to go. You need to walk through it, the length of it, the breadth of it. Walk through it, and it is only as you walk that you can possess it. That was what Abraham was told. Now let's look back at Joshua. Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. How did they get here? They had been in the wilderness for 40 years. They had come to the brink of their promise. Moses was dead. And Moses' mission was therefore accomplished because God had says, you are going to see the land, but you will not enter. And therefore, Moses now being dead signifies that it is time to enter. It is time to cross over into the promise. But what was the situation that obtained at the time? At the time when they were instructed to go over, they were separated from their promise by River Jordan. At the time when God was saying to Joshua, Joshua, go over and possess the land. It was in the middle of the rainy season. It was the time when the river Jordan was at its widest. It is said that the river Jordan at that time was more than one mile wide. And it is at that time that Joshua was being told, you take these people, the same rebellious, stiff-necked people who gave Moses all kinds of problems and heartache, take these people and carry them into their promise. Go over Jordan. It is interesting that in instructing, in instructing Joshua, God of the word of God specifically says, Now therefore arise, go over Jordan. Because Jordan was the boundary that separated them from the wilderness and the promised land. You cannot get to your promise unless you are willing to face your Jordan. Yeah. Hallelujah. You, want, you, you, you see what's happening here is that there, God says, I will give you, I, God, have given you this promised land. 
He said, I, God, will drive out the nations that are in the land, and I have given it to you. But in order for you to come into possession of that which God has already given you, first thing you need to do is cross Jordan. You see, Jordan symbolizes a kind of mind change. A kind of new paradigm. A kind of different thinking. Because you cannot carry the same thinking that you had on a wilderness journey into your promise. You have to get to a point where you are able to, to, to make up your mind and to think differently because in the wilderness everything was done for you. You wake up in the morning you got manna You wake up in the evening, you have quail and manna. When you get thirsty, you say, Moses, we need water. And that was the mindset because all of these people who now gathered on the banks of the Jordan, they were born in the wilderness. And that's all they knew. Manna in the morning, manna in the evening. But they were not coming to their promise. In preparation to enter into their promise, that which God says that he would give them, I want for you to join me in reflecting on verse 3. Joshua chapter 1. Every place. Let us take time with this. God said, I have given you the land. But then he in verse 3, it comes back and he says, Every place that the, the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. It kind of mix up, don't it? Because it says, From the river Euphrates unto the other place shall be your course, that have I given you. But then it comes back and it says, of all that I have given you, only what you are prepared to walk upon, you will get. I have provided for you all of that. But what you get is what you walk upon. Every place that you are prepared to go shall be your territory. It means that the limit is you who are limiting yourself because I have given you as far as your eyes can see westward, northward, southward, eastward, but you need to walk on it. Hallelujah. Israel was given a physical land. A 
and they were required to walk on a physical land in order to get a control of the physical territory that God gave them. But I believe the same thing is applicable today where God has given us several things, not necessarily physical. Some of us, we have gotten our health. And in order to get and enjoy the health that God says, I wish that you prosper and be in health. You've got to do some walking. You know, the mindset, the mindset was that God supposed to do everything for them. Because that's what used to happen. Manna, water, anything they needed. God miraculously provided. They didn't have to do anything. The Bible tells us that their clothes never get whole and their shoe never wear out because God was miraculously providing and working and giving. But I hear God says to 47G that you have been getting all kinds of things done for you and it's time for you to get up and go. 47G, it's time to walk. God has given us this territory. God has given us many, many souls across Swallowfield. Hallelujah. And Windsor Avenue and Stadium Gardens. But we have got to walk. Glory to God. You know, church, we have a mentality. <laughs> we have a mentality to tell everybody to come. That's what we say, come. But the commission that we have been given is to go. And we sit in church and we say the people them not coming. The souls not coming. But the commission that God gave us was to go. Saint Mark, God, Jesus said, go into all the world, preach. And when we look, I believe it's the last verse in the boat. Mark 16, about 20, somewhere there. It says, as they go. As they go, the Lord going with them and confirming his words with miracles and signs following them. Let me tell you something, church. There is nothing going to happen significantly or dramatically until we go. Hallelujah. God is saying to us, go. And possess the land. That's why.
God is saying to us as a church, go and possess the land. It is not that God cannot save. His hand is not short. His words have not lost its power. His blood has not lost its power. It's the same God. It's the same blood. It's the same word. But we can only get what we are prepared to walk on. We cannot walk on it without going. The very act of walking in itself means you must be going. If you walk in, you naturally go in. And I'm saying to us that God is saying to us today, every place that we are prepared to go, then God is saying, He will go with us. That shall be our course. It belongs to us. All we need to do is go. Every place, every place that the sole of your foot is prepared to walk on is yours. It's not just as a church that God is speaking to us. I'm sure today he's speaking to us individually. Because there are some things in your life that God has given you. There are some possession as, as, as children of God, some promises of God that he promised you. If you notice, the name Joshua and the name Jesus is the same. They both mean Savior or salvation. So Joshua was who God used to bring Israel into their promise. Jesus is who God gave to bring all of us into his promise. So we all have the promises of God. But all that we hear people talk about and all that we envy people for and all that we think, boy, those, are, those people are so special and fortunate. It is the same promise that God has given to everyone who believe on him. Sister Karina, you never get any preferred salvation. Not because you can sing. You believe that there are some perks that comes with your salvation that only belongs to you. We have all made to drink at the same well, and we all have the same salvation. And with that salvation comes the same promises. Amen. 
This suggests that what could be responsible for what appears to be difference is that some of us are prepared to walk. Some of us are prepared to let ensure that every word that is written in the promises of God that I step out in faith and I step on it. Because as long as I can walk on it, God says it's going to be mine. <laughs> what did later on, and we won't get into it, what did God said to Joshua? He said, Joshua, be strong and have a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide her an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And he repeated that command and that encouragement. He says, only be thou strong and very courageous. There's a call for us to go. The call today is to go and possess the land. Some of you here have received specific promises over your life. And they are not being, or appears not to be materializing. And you have wondered, oh God, and said, From the river Euphrates, even unto the wilderness, oh God, and said, as far as your eyes can see, east, west, north, and south. How did he say that? And I am not getting it. You know why? Because you're sitting down. Somebody says, I'm waiting down here by the river until you come, Lord Jesus. It's not my fault. He's that it's time for us to get up and start walking because it's only that which we walk upon we're gonna get don't blame God that he didn't come and rescue you that he didn't come and fill your cup. That he didn't come and give you all that you need and all that he promised. 
It's yours. It's yours. But you're not going to get it sitting down. Go, get up, go and possess the land which the Lord thy God has given you. Jesus Christ has already paid every cent, every cent that was owed. He has already paid for it. But you need to go and get it. It's not going to come to you. Hallelujah. 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 You know what God said to Israel? He said, I am going to give you houses that you did not build. He said, I am going to give you vineyards that you didn't plant. But let us be a little bit literal now. God has a house down in Montego Bay for you, Sister Karina. A house that you didn't build. But you are sitting here It said, go for the house that you promised me and bring it because this is where I am. And when you don't get the house, you say, Lord, you did promise that I would get. And I have been waiting how long now. And I'm not seeing anything happening. I'm going to cut it short. Let me just say. In addition to crossing Jordan, the land that was promised wasn't vacant land. The land that was promised had fortified cities. The land that was promised and men of war who knew how to wage war and fight. And so, the promise that you are coming into, we may have a mentality that we just sit and cut our ten and it is delivered to us. Because that's what this generation has come to know. Online shopping. Matter of fact, I realize that there is no Ahuba Heat, E-A-T. Uber Eat. And that is what you call when you want your meal delivered to your door. And so that same mentality obtains where I just need to ring Jesus on the telephone and I tell him what you need. I need a delivery to 17 Blightwood Drive. Because I'm not in the mood to walk. I'm not in the mood to drive. But 
the word from the Lord today is go. Go possess your land. Go possess the job that has been waiting for you. Go possess the host that has been waiting for you. Go possess the property that has been waiting for you. Yes, Uber Heat will deliver food to your door. But the promises of God to tap into it. Remember today, it is only whether by faith you are prepared to walk or physically grounds that you are prepared to walk on shall be your coast. If you don't walk, don't blame anybody. I want to pray for somebody today. Verses 6 and 7 of Joshua chapter 1. The word of the Lord to Joshua was, Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Because where you have to walk is dangerous. The first walk that they had to walk was Jericho's what it said jericho was a city that was walled around the thickness of the wall at least in some parts was such that a chariot could drive on top of it and that is what god had told them would be their possession but the first encounter, I believe, when they crossed over Jordan, brought into sharp focus what was required of them to walk. Because for seven days, they walked. <laughs> And interestingly, all they did was walk. Not a word. Not a fight. Just walk. Oh, God. God is awesome, you know. God had told them, every place that you are prepared to walk is going to be yours. I believe Jericho was like a little training ground where they had to walk for seven laps. And when they recognized and got used to walking just because God said walk, they were now prepared for the rest of their promise then no would have learned the importance of walking in order to possess. Jericho would have taught them, if you walk, you possess. If you don't walk, the wall between you and your promise Remain standing. Somebody today. 
you know that you have received a promise from God. Like Israel, it could have been from generations ago. Could have been years ago. And you have not yet realized that promise. The word from the Lord today is be strong and courageous and emphasize repeated only be thou strong and very courageous. Somebody need to step out in faith today. Yes, you know that you need to walk but there are giants over there there are high walls and mountains over there. There's a river Jordan in the path. And it's intimidating. But if you want the courage and the strength today, because you are ready to walk, join me at this altar. You're ready to step out from your comfort zone. You're ready to take on a new way of thinking. You are ready to put the wilderness and the manna mentality behind you. And you are ready today to walk. Some of you, there is ministry that God has called you to. And you continue to hide because you're afraid. Whatever God is speaking to you today, it is in your personal life. There are some promises that you have not tapped into. Because you have not made the sacrifice and the effort to walk. The very nature of walking, it means you leave your comfort zone. You cannot be two places at the same time. So if you are, if, if you have walked and you are prepared to step into new territory. It means that you have to leave the existing one. I'm saying to you today, if you know that there are promises, that there are places that God, you know he wants to take you to. Step. Israel had to walk around Jericho and that was just God's way of showing them and reminding them of the importance of stepping out, of walking. God I pray today that just as Israel was obedient in walking around Jericho until the wall come down, I am praying today, Heavenly Father, that every person who will leave their seats and will walk to this altar because they have sensed your call to a promise, to a possession. I pray that their step to this altar will be like the steps of Israel around Jericho wall. That every obstacle and every barrier 
that stands between them and the possession that you have promised them. I pray God that as they walk to this altar, those barriers, those Jericho walls, those endurances and obstacles, the fears within and the falls without, I pray today, sovereign God, who hears and answers prayer, that as they walk, as steps are made to this altar, in obedience to your command, that today will be a reenactment of what happened at Jericho. Walls will fall today, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, cause walls to fall. Yes, Lord, cause barriers to come down. Yes, Lord, whether they are within or they are without, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray today, sovereign God, that walls will fall. Yes, Lord. And I ask, Lord, I ask God that we, your people, your called out ones, will no longer operate in fear. Oh, God, yes, Lord, but we will be strong and of good courage. Lord, we will not be intimidated by anything that stands in our way because you are assured us, Lord, that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. There are more with us than those against us. Yes, Lord, and you says, Lord, that you will fight for us. Help us to boldly go. Yes, God. Help us and cause us to go with courage and boldness. Yes, God, standing on the promises of God. Standing, oh God, with confidence. Cause us to stand. Yes, Lord, to stand. And as the word says, I've been done all to stand. Just stand. I pray for this local church, God. I pray that a going spirit will come upon us. Yes, Lord, I pray that you would anoint our feet to walk. Oh, God, 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 God calls us as that chorus says, I'm going to walk right out of this valley, lift my hands and praise the Lord. Oh, God, descend upon us a spirit that will cause us to go. Yes, Lord, make us willing to go. Make us willing to go. It is what your instruction is, Lord, to go into all the world. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, may we no longer be comfortable until we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, almighty sovereign God. Thank you that you have given us the territories. Yes, God, as far as our eyes can see, it shall be our territory. But God, it is ours and we thank you. But today you reminded us to possess it. We have to walk in it. Yes, Lord, open our eyes, Lord, that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. I pray for the spirit of revelation. Oh God, that will cause God us to see, to see the promises, the territories that is made up for us, Lord. And may we walk. May we walk. Yes, God. As the eagle stars up the nest, of our young ones, God, I pray, Almighty God, Holy Spirit, that you will stir us up. Stir us up, God. That we will go and possess the land. Let your kingdom come, Lord. And let your will be done, we pray. God, I pray for those who are here, who have walked to this altar, where there is sickness in their bodies, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's a promise that you made, God. You said, by your stripes, we were healed, already provided, God. And so in the name of Jesus, let those step to this altar, God, be God sources that will break the yoke of sicknesses and diseases. And those who are listening right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray the healing hand of God. Oh God, as they step out in faith, may they receive healing in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise, God. Thine is the glory. Thine is the power. Thine the honor. Thine the majesty. It's all yours, God. We worship and adore you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you that all oh God, the Jericho walls and the barriers have come down. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, as you go back to your seats, believe God. Believe God, purpose in your heart that you're going to walk out of this valley. Lift your hand and praise the Lord. You're not going to sit here till you die because there's a promise that is just a little bit higher. In the name of Jesus. Go, possess. 
your land. Go possess your promise. In Jesus' name. All right, just to highlight a couple of things and to announce. We have a few persons who will be migrating. Um, and I don't know if it's because the theme for this quarter is gold. That Minister Melisha has taken it to heart and is going. But she will be migrating at the end of this month. Close to the end of this month, I believe. She leaves for the UK. Right? Um, we also have not present here today, but as well, Sister Jacqueline. Jacqueline Corey, I think it is. Who will be leaving, I think, in this week coming, migrating likewise to the US, as well as Sister Diane Carroll, who will also be leaving sometime during this week. Um, so I'm going to invite the ministers to join me and let us, um, well, Sister Mel is here, let us. Let us be praying for them as they go. So we pray for Minister Militia and for the others. Let me just ask the question, anybody else going before the summit? And anybody else going? All right, so let us, let us be praying for Sister Melisha and our other two sisters. Almighty God, we thank you that you are our good shepherd. And you promise, Lord, that you will go before us. I pray, Father, that as you would have opened up these opportunities, for our sisters, Lord, to move to other physical locations, new countries, new territories, new areas. Lord, I ask that you go before, Lord, that you make the past straight, straight, that you protect from evil, that you guide, that you strengthen. Lord, that you would cause Lord, resources to be in place. Lord, persons to, to support and to help will be in place. And Lord, as they go, Father, I pray that they will go with the message. Lord, that they will go as light and their lives will be light that shines. That through them, others will see Christ and come to glorify you. Holy Spirit, be their comfort, be their shield, be their strength. Lord, let no evil come nigh their dwellings, O oh God. Let your angel encamp around about them, and may they find favor with God and with man. And the blessings of God that maketh rich and add no sorrows shall be theirs. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I also want to remind you about our worship in the streets. I am making a very special appeal. Um, Sunday the 28th, very special appeal. Um, I'd like for you to plan to be there, 5.30. We are going into Swallowfield. And in case you forget, 
Um, you know, the Lord has assured us that Swallowfield shall be ours. And we are going. We are going worshiping. And I really ask that you be praying, praying fervently, and that you also um, be planning for that time. The 28th, Sunday the 28th, it will actually be 530 Providence Lane, that's up the road. Um, and we just go and we worship and watch God shake, swallow, feel, and bring down barriers and strongholds. In keeping with this mission that God has called us to, we need a PA, mobile PA system. And I'm happy that we have some foreigners here today. And we have those who have joined us online. Um, we need a mobile PA system to fulfill this mission. We have to pull down everything that is in the church to take out to the streets. And, and it's, it's not the best. We need a, because we're going to be going. We are going to be going and we need this PA system. It's estimated complete system would be about $2.5 million, and I'm seeking contribution. Um, so I'd like to get some before rally. Um, so if the Lord has laid it on your heart to make a contribution, um, please, we need that system as soon as possible, $2.5 million. Those who are watching online, we also are requiring your support in this venture. Uh, look forward to it because we are going to possess some territories. We are going to walk upon some ground that God has given to us. Praise God. Um, so remember our rally, um, is to, a part of the rally is towards that. Um, your sacrificial giving and rally um, is towards that amongst other projects. Um, so I'm going to invite you to stand with me, please. On the 26th of this month will be the Seven Miles Rally. We want to go and support them because we expect them to be back supporting us on the 11th of August when it is our rally. I am led to ask my praise team to take us out in this song, The Blessings. We know that song? The blessing. And I want for you, as we sing together this song, to do some walking. Walk from your seat, walk over to a neighbor, shake a hand, bless somebody, greet somebody, hug somebody, as we declare the Lord bless you and keep you. 